Hi everyone! Today we are going to review the most up-to-date algorithm for the treatment of asthma, which came in last year in the GINA 2019 guidelines. Here you can see a page taken directly from the GINA 2019 guidelines that is the algorithm for treatment of adults and adolescents greater than 12 years of age with asthma. First, I want to draw your attention to the circle in the red box here. The GINA 2019 guidelines added this little image to remind us of the things that we should do at every single visit when we see a patient for asthma. We should start by reviewing their response to current therapy, go over current symptoms, current history of exacerbations, evaluate for any side effects of therapy, potentially evaluate lung function, and then assess the patient's satisfaction with their current therapy, their current quality of life, those sorts of things. We should assess, confirm if they have a diagnosis, talk about symptom control, and assess modifiable risk factors. We should look into comorbidities and at every single visit assess a patient's inhaler technique and adherence to their medicines, and also evaluate the patient's goals for therapy. Finally, we should uh, consider adjusting therapy if needed. We should treat modifiable risk factors if possible and evaluate what we can do for the comorbidities. There are non-pharmacological strategies that we could educate patients on, as well as educate them overall about asthma and training of how to use their different medications. Next, let's talk about the language that the guidelines uses to refer to different inhalers and their purpose in therapy. In this red box, you can see in orange uh, the term preferred controller. So in this, they recommend um, particular medications for controller therapy, and then at the bottom have other potential controller options that can be add-on therapy. Now, when we talk to patients about their different types of inhalers, um, explaining to them which of their medicines is controller therapy that they're typically taking on more of a chronic basis, um, probably every day, depending upon what step of therapy they're in. But then they may also have reliever therapy that they use on top of the controller therapy if they have breakthrough symptoms or an exacerbation. It's important for patients to understand which of their therapies should be taken on a regular basis and which they would add on um, in some of those situations like an exacerbation or breakthrough of symptoms. Before we move any further, I want to lay the groundwork for one of the major changes to the 2019 guidelines for the treatment of asthma, the use of as-needed short-acting beta agonist. Retrospective studies have shown increased risks of asthma-related exacerbations and asthma-related death the more short-acting beta agonists th canisters that a patient fills. So if a patient is filling their albuterol inhaler 12 times or more a year, they may have an increased risk of asthma-related complications. Now, it may not necessarily be that this particular medicine is dangerous for the patient. It really is more related to the fact that patients use their albuterol inhalers um, on such an as-needed basis that even if they are qualifying for a higher level of therapy and would qualify for a different controller therapy, they may not necessarily um, seek care for their primary care providers to get a new inhaler prescription. So keeping patients on just the short-acting beta agonists that provide some immediate relief um, may not necessarily be the most safe option moving forward. One of the big shifts in the 2019 guidelines is that albuterol is no longer the only option as the preferred reliever. We actually also have as-needed low-dose ICS for Motorol, so a corticosteroid plus for Motorol, or Simbicort. Simbicort was the medicine studied in the Sigma trials that brought us these new recommendations. In these trials, they looked at patients who were using Simbicort as both their preferred controller, and then they could also take more of it as their preferred reliever, um, and they saw a reduction in exacerbations with less of... Um, issues with side effects from corticosteroids in comparison to patients who were taking a corticosteroid every day. And so that's where these new recommendations come from. Um, we can see that taking that Simbicort as their controller medicine is a potential option as a reliever option. However, the guidelines do point out that this doesn't mean they want you to prescribe um, multiple separate inhalers for a patient. So we don't need, if a patient is taking a separate inhaled corticosteroid or a separate inhaled corticosteroid long-acting beta agonist combination, you wouldn't need to also give them Simbicort as their preferred reliever. 
But in patients who are already on Simbicort, that same Simbicort could be their preferred reliever as well. If patients are on different therapies that aren't the Simbicort, you would still give them um, as needed short acting beta agonist or albuterol. Now, you might ask me, why can't I use any of these other inhaled corticosteroid long acting beta agonist combinations? They're all pretty interchangeable within the class, right? Well, actually, the formoterol in the Simbicort, that component, the long-acting beta agonist component, has a pretty fast onset of action, but then still that prolonged duration of action. So if a patient is using it for um, immediate relief of symptoms, it's going to work pretty quickly, but then hang around. Whereas um, all of our other long-acting beta agonists have a longer onset of action. So a patient really couldn't use this for immediate relief of symptoms. So that's why this formoterol is the long-acting beta agonist option that we can use um, as immediate relief of symptoms. Now let's move into each of the steps for treatment of asthma. In step one, and this was the major paradigm shift uh, for the 2019 guidelines, the preferred controller is as-needed low-dose inhaled corticosteroid and formoterol, so an ics lava. The particular medicine that was studied it was Simbicort, so think about as-needed low-dose Simbicort. But this is actually the preferred option for patients that are having less than two, um, two days with asthma-related symptoms a month. Other controller options are a low-dose inhaled corticosteroid, so just the corticosteroid itself, taken whenever a short-acting beta agonist is taken. So instead of previously patients that met step one therapy, we would just give them as-needed albuterol. Now they're recommending that patients at this level receive some sort of inhaled corticosteroid, but this can be taken as-needed. Step two are those patients who have symptoms more than two days a month, but less than every, every single day. These patients can either get a daily low-dose inhaled corticosteroid, so something like a daily fluticasone or a daily Flovent, or they can also do this as-needed low-dose Simbicort, as these step one and step two patients were both the ones in these Sigma trials, which is where we get these new Simbicort recommendations from. For those ICS for motorol patients, like we talked about, continuing to use the ICS for motorol as the preferred reliever would be an option. Or if the patient is one of those top options that's on just the inhaled corticosteroid, you would prescribe an as-needed short-acting beta agonist, so that separate albuterol for them to use as their reliever. Other controller options include a leukotriene receptor antagonist, or monoleucast, or that same recommendation from the bottom of step one, that a patient would have their inhaled corticosteroid as well as their albuterol inhaler, and they would take these two inhalers one after the other to treat immediate symptoms. Step three are patients who are having symptoms every day, waking up with symptoms, um, or having risk factors for asthma-related complications. They should be started on a daily low-dose inhaled corticosteroid long-acting beta agonist. And so if you start them on Simbicort, they would use Simbicort as, also as their preferred reliever. However, if they're started on one of our other long-acting beta agonist and inhaled corticosteroid combinations, these patients you would also prescribe the albuterol for them to use as their preferred reliever. If a patient were to first present with severely uncontrolled asthma or an asthma exacerbation, they would qualify for step four therapy. Or if you have a patient who is on step three therapy and whose symptoms are not controlled, you would want to step them up to step four therapy. These patients would receive a medium dose inhaled corticosteroid and long acting beta agonist combination therapy. And then they could use that as needed Simbicort as their reliever or short-acting beta, beta agonist or albuterol as their reliever. Other controller options would be high-dose inhaled corticosteroid alone. You could add on Spiriva or Teotropium in these patients. There's some data for our LAMAs or long-acting muscarinic agents um, in asthma, and you could consider adding on monolucast in these patients as well. Finally, our step five patients are those that should be referred to a pulmonologist. These patients may receive a high dose ICS LABA therapy, um, but they should also be referred to consider adding on um, 
one of our new biologic therapies. These are the injectables, the things like Dupixent or Ficinra or Zolaire, if you've seen these advertised. These are patients where previously we really didn't have anything else to do besides adding a daily um, oral steroid, so asking the patient to take prednisone every day to suppress their asthma-related symptoms. But thankfully now we have some of these injectable medications um, that have less of those side effects, those cumulative side effects of a daily oral corticosteroid. Um, but if the patient reaches this point, we should likely be referring them to a pulmonary specialist.